Sound check. Check one. I did hear that on the live stream, but I have no video. Sound check. Check one. Welcome, viewers. We will get started soon. Thank you.
It is so good to see everybody here and thank you so much for coming. We are so excited to celebrate the um, third years today cohort 17. I guess I should back up. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. Um, <laughs> I am the president of SAA and me and my board members um, helped put this on today. We're super excited. It's a great time and we are just so thankful for, um, you know, being able to work together as the cohorts. We we really made a good knit uh, bond together. So it's really exciting. Um, today we are going to go over the ceremony. Dr. E is going to be giving a presentation. And then following this, we are also going to do a pinning ceremony for the students to give the second year students to give to the third year students um, as a way to say that we're proud of them. And then following this, there will be food and cake down in the atrium that you're welcome to join. So Dr. E, if you'd like to come. Okay, can everybody hear me? I feel like I'm like three times louder than you. Sorry. Okay. Um, so, like Elizabeth said, we're here to honor cohort 17 um, here today. We're also um, missing one member. I hope she's joining virtually. Julia Rose is also in cohort 17. Um, so, we have Ophiria Chang, Amelia Chapman, Kimberly Shiwi, and Julia Rose. Um, so these students have accomplished a lot over the last three years, and we're really excited to honor them today. Um, before we go too far into this, I just want to do some introductions, mostly for anyone watching at home, since everyone in this room mostly knows each other. Um, what we have here, we have Dr. Laura DeThorn. She's back there, the chair of the department. Um, so the students have interacted with her, with her in that regard, but she's also taught their um, research methods course. Um, we also have Dr. Robin Kreider, who is the academic, ooh, round of applause for Robin. She's the uh, academic coordinator of the audiology program, so she's worked with them in that regard and also taught many classes, anatomy, disorders, vestibular, all kinds of things. Um, and we also have Teresa Crumpton, um, who is the clinic coordinator, um, and she's worked with them in the on-campus clinic, organized their off-clinic, uh, off-campus clinic placements, and helped them with their externships, as well as teaching the pediatric courses. Um, and then, that's me. Um, so, oh, thanks, thanks. Um, so I've worked with them in the on-campus clinic, and then also as the um, advisor for the Student Academy of Audiology. So as you can see, we're a pretty small core audiology faculty, and the students have taken a lot of classes. So this is their uh, course sequence here. So they've taken pretty much all of these right now. They're in their last semester of coursework right now. Um, so classes in anatomy, diagnostics, vestibular, geriatrics, pediatrics, uh, ethics, all kinds of things. Um, and with such a small core faculty, we've really had to rely on expertise from people outside of our department um, to assist in educating these students. So I definitely wanted to recognize them today as well. Um, so these are some of the instructors um, that these students have worked with. So thank you to all of our part-time instructors as well. Um, in addition to all of that coursework, the students have also been in clinic um, pretty much from the beginning of their um, schooling. So they start in the on-campus clinic with Dr. Crumpton and I, um, seeing patients while they're learning what to do with those patients in class. Um, and then as their skills kind of grow and develop, um, they move off campus. Um, and we have a really large amount of off-campus preceptors um, that really, we could not do this without you. And uh, the faculty, thank you. The students, thank you. And I think we have one with, of them here with us today. So thank you, Sam. Um, 
Yeah, so I just wanted to shout that out and say thank you to everyone who has helped these students. They're a huge part, um, you're a huge part of their success as well. So as you can kind of hear and see from the course list, all the placements they've been, ENTs, private practices, hospitals, et cetera, et cetera, um, the students have really accomplished a lot already. Um, they're ready to go off onto their externships where they're gonna practice for a full year. Um, Pretty independently, they will be supervised by an audiologist, but it's really a time where they grow a lot of their clinical independence. Um, so it's really impressive what you guys have accomplished in the last three years. Um, and I think what makes it maybe even more impressive for this cohort is that they did all this during a uh, pandemic. I know we're sick of talking about the pandemic. I'm sick of talking about the pandemic too, but I feel like you can't celebrate your achievements without talking about how that has impacted you guys. Um, so this cohort, as you know, started in fall of 2019. Can we just take a moment of respect for fall of 2019? <laughs> right, RIP. Um, and then in spring of 2020, right, everything kind of came to a screeching halt um, for these students and for us on campus. That meant a really rapid change from life uh, as usual to virtual classes, clinics closed, we have to do clinical simulations, right? And I don't even call it a transition to that because to me a transition means you had time to <laughs> adapt, right? And it was very, very rapid. Um, so we all had to make that change. Most of us had never had classes on Zoom or taught classes on Zoom or used Zoom or WebEx. Um, and it was just a really big change, right? And what we, know about humans in general but especially from working clinically right is that humans don't really like change i always think about it like my hearing aid patients and i know you guys have seen this too right especially older adults who have had an acquired hearing loss you fit them with a hearing aid and it's not always this beautiful youtube or whatever moment where it's like oh i love it right oh that sounds funny my voice sounds weird my wife breathes too loud i can hear the crease in my floors, right? Because it's different. And we counsel our patients that um, they really need to give themselves time to adapt to the change so that they can start to see the benefit, right? And I'm not super comfortable with this transition I'm making here because I'm not trying to say that the pandemic was beneficial, right? We can acknowledge that it's been pretty terrible. Um, a lot of us have had pretty significant losses personally, um, financially or whatever, but um, I think what we can say that we all gained um, was the knowledge that we can actually adapt, right? And these students have really had to adapt um, to something that was less than ideal. Um, and they've shown the ability to grow and to learn in an unprecedented environment. If we never hear unprecedented again, we'll be happy. Um, but they've really, they really should be acknowledged for um, how they've adapted and the flexibility that they've shown. Um, and I would say that that skill relates really well to your future clinical practice, right? You're working with people. People are unprecedented and unpredictable, right? You can't control all the variables um, in a clinic. All you can do is take what you've learned, what you've studied, what you've practiced, right? Um, and to do the best you can to provide the best outcomes for your patient. And the ability to adapt, I think, is extra important in a field like audiology because this field is always evolving, right? Just when you think you know this hearing aid technology, the company comes out with something new, right? It's always growing. I think it's the hardest and the best part about what we do. Um, there's always something new to learn. And I feel like students always, not just you, me too, always feel like, they don't know enough, right? Like, when am I gonna know it all? I'm not perfect, what am, you know, what am I doing? They're always worrying about that, but um, I actually would challenge us all to try to think about that as a positive, because I think if you ever get to the point where you feel like you know enough or you know it all, first of all, like, let me know how you got there. Um, but secondly, um, I feel like you might have lost your, your edge or your drive to make yourself better. So I want you to, Feel like you don't know enough so that you can keep pushing yourselves forward to learn more.
But at the same time, um, I do really want to acknowledge what you do know. And I want you guys to think back on how you felt when you first stepped foot in the clinic and the first time we said, all right, do this audiogram, right? And your hands are shaking, as you're, right? And now you can do audiograms in your sleep, right? And there's a lot of other things that you guys have learned. So um, I want you to acknowledge that as well. Um, let's see, what I'm really trying to say is that you guys are exactly where you need to be. You have a lot to learn, but you've learned so much already. Um, and that's the reason we're all here to celebrate both of those things and to honor you. So we're really excited to do that. So the white coat, um, I'm going to have in a minute, everybody come up one at a time to do the white coat. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of what the white coat stands for. Right. And I think that the symbolism is multifaceted. So, of course, as we've talked about, you guys have accomplished a lot and the white coat does symbolize what you've done, what you know, your expertise. Yeah, this, these are historical white coat photos. I'm in one of them, too. <laughs> Not to be vain, but, you know, um, so what you've accomplished so far, which is a lot. Right. But the other piece, which is maybe more important about the white coat, is that I think it really symbolizes oops, responsibility, right? It has a certain weight to it. Um, when you wear a white coat or when you are the doctor, you have the patient's trust, you have their family's trust, right? And sometimes you have that trust in a moment where the patients are feeling pretty vulnerable, right? So that's a pretty heavy responsibility. Um, you have the responsibility um, to your patients, to their families, to your colleagues, um, to the profession as a whole. Uh, responsibility to practice ethically with cultural humility, um, to follow best practices, right, and to continue the process of lifelong learning. So when you take your coats here in a minute, I want you to feel proud of everything that you've accomplished, and I also want you to feel the weight of the responsibility um, that that coat recognizes. So. Without further ado, I'd like to call Dr. Crumpton and Dr. Kreider, which I didn't warn her. Yep, too bad. That you would like to come up so you can help me give the coats, please. Okay, so first, I'm going to honor Julia. Julia is not with us in person today because she is in Maryland right now completing um, one of her clinical rotations. But Julia is originally from Bloomfield Hills. She did her undergrad work at Rice University before joining us here at Western. Um, she's had a variety of clinical placements, the on-campus Charles Van Riper Clinic, ENT Specialist Hearing Care Center, Michigan Ear Institute, and Designer Audiology. Um, in addition to her clinical experiences, Julia has also completed a research fellowship at Boystown National Research Hospital, um, where she's worked in a human auditory development lab um, and made presentations for the National Auditory Society. Um, her most clinical or memorable clinical experience, so I asked them all to share a story that really stuck with them. Um, she says, we saw a patient who brought in old hearing aids that had never really worked well for her. They were at least five years old, probably older. This patient came in with her daughter and both mom and daughter did not have high hopes for the patient's ability to hear even with hearing aids. Um, Dr. Payerk was always willing to help patients whether they bought hearing aids from her or not. When we ran real ear, so that's a test we do to verify hearing aids for those joining at home. Um, we found that the hearing aids were significantly underfit. We've never found that before, right, guys? <laughs> as soon as we adjusted them, the patient could hear much better. The difference was night and day. I remember the daughter whispering something and her mom responding. The patient's daughter was so delighted that her mother could hear again better than she ever expected. This is a family I think about when I think about how important it is to do real ear with every patient. And that makes my heart sink because I will die on that hill. <laughs> Um, Julia will be completing her externship at Designer Audiology in Highland, Maryland. Um, it's a private practice. She's going to be having adult and pediatric experience, hearing evaluations, hearing aids, cochlear implants, tinnitus management, auditory processing, vestibular, um, and cerumen removal. 
So congratulations to Julia, we're really excited for you. This is your virtual white coat. <laughs> Got really fancy for you. Okay, next is going to be Ophiria Chang. So you, can, you wanna come stand up here? Um, Ophiria is from Grand Rapids. She came to us from Grand Valley State University. Um, I actually remember Ophiria when you came for your open house and I think we sat at a table like right in the middle and I just remember thinking that I really hoped that you would come to Western and you did so I'm really glad that you did. Um, Ophiria has had a wide range of clinical experiences as well on campus and then the Michigan ENT and allergy hearing specialists of Kalamazoo Mary Freebed and Spectrum Lakeland um, and when Ophiria is not in clinic or in class she's definitely doing something else on campus. So she was the uh, former president of the Student Academy of Audiology. She's the current president of the Graduate Student Association, which is across all grad students on campus. She was a grad ambassador. She was a clinic GA. And she's also the person that I email every time I need someone to do something for me for one of my classes or recruitment things. So I really appreciate that about you. Um, Ophiria is uh, most let's do her most clinical memorable gosh I'm going to say that wrong every time most memorable clinical experience uh, was talking to a patient about tinnitus management the patient had mild hearing loss but extremely debilitating tinnitus counseling through what could affect tinnitus and the side effects it has on other aspects of life really helped me realize how hearing health is a public health issue providing care for the patient helped improve not just their hearing and tinnitus but also their overall quality of life so it kind of reminds you why you do what you do right she is going to be moving far away from us and going to Central Texas Veterans Healthcare System in Temple, which is near Austin. Um, it's focused on veterans health, hearing evaluations, tinnitus evaluations and management, vestibular assessments, cochlear implants, hearing aids, neurodiagnostics, room and management. So just about everything. Um, and we're really proud of you, Ophiria, and congratulations. Yay. And yeah, just stay up here. <laughs> you, I'm gonna make you stand in front of people for it's not that many people. Yeah, is that good for the view still? Okay. Next up, Amelia Chapman. Woohoo. Um, Amelia is from Dexter, Michigan. Uh, she went to Bowling Green State University. I wanna make sure, can the camera see Amelia? Okay, just making sure. You're not getting out of the spotlight. Um, something really fun about Amelia is that she has the most interesting hobbies and hidden talents, like the most interesting. She does aerial silks, something with fire, like fire twirling, yep. Um, rock climbing, all kinds of things. Um, so that's been really fun to get to know about you, I think. Um, she's had a lot of clinical placements too, on campus again, adult and pediatric ENT, um, Mosa, Berrien Springs, and Constance Brown. Um, she's also our current Michigan LEND trainee. So LEND is the Leadership Education in Neurodevelopmental and Related Disorders. Woo, nailed it. I tried to do that yesterday at the open house and I'm not sure I spat it out so well. Um, so LEND is um, a pretty competitive leadership trainee program. So there's students across the state of Michigan um, in different fields that work together with the goal of improving the health of infants, children, and teens with um, neurodevelopmental disabilities and other related needs. So that's a pretty big accomplishment on top of everything else that she's done. Um, Amelia's most memorable clinical experience was having a discussion about cochlear implants in sign language uh, with a deaf-blind patient. And I was able to help him choose what company and device he wanted, as well as answer all the questions he had. Last I heard, he was getting evaluated for the surgery. So that's a pretty cool experience. Um, she will be moving up north for her externship to beautiful Traverse City. Uh, she'll be working at Lake Ann Audiology, which is a private practice, and also Munson Medical Center, um, doing hearing aids, electrophys, adults and peds. Um, cognitive screenings, and newborn hearing screenings. So a pretty wide range of things too. So we're excited for you, congratulations. Yay. 
Okay, last but not least, we have Kimberly Shiwi. Come on down. Um, Kimberly is from South Haven, and she came from the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, where her degree was actually in um, hospitality management. Um, and then she completed her post back here at Western um, and then entered the graduate program. Um, her clinical placements have been at uh, on campus clinic, Lakeland ENT, Spectrum Health, Michigan ENT, and DeVos Children's Hospital. Um, there's a couple of things I always think about when I think of Kimberly. One is um, when you talk to me about your transition from wedding planning and event planning. I know I write this in your letters too, but it really sticks with me. Um, from event planning to audiology, because it seems like that's two really different fields. Um, but she said that when you're planning like a wedding, the um, spouses or the people in the wedding are kind of bringing their ideas and their beliefs and what they want to the table. And then your job is to use your expertise and your knowledge and work with what what they need and what they believe to provide them the best experience and that that's pretty similar to what you do in the clinic, which makes a lot of sense. And I just never would have thought of that. Um, and then the other thing is that Kimberly has done all of this in her program um, while also raising three children, um, which I can't really fathom at all. Um, and also with a husband who is an active duty uh, military member and who has been deployed at times throughout her program. So that's pretty incredible. Um, and I know that she really um, values the support that her family, her husband, her children, her in-laws, her parents have provided her during this time. So we're really proud of you and congratulations. Oops, I forgot your most valuable clinic. Dang it, I really. All right, this is a pretty good one, so we'll still do this. <laughs> Kimberly's most memorable clinical experience was her first Baja's a bone anchored hearing aid activation, uh, which left her in tears. It was a woman who had lost much of her hearing, could only hear her husband if he yelled at her. And when they turned it on, he whispered, can you hear me? And she asked if he was yelling. He said, no, he was whispering. Um, and she broke out into tears and so did the rest of them. Um, not often you get to see a light switch moment for hearing and that was one. Um, she says, I cried all the way home knowing that this was definitely my calling. So that's a pretty special moment, I think. She will be going to um, kind of a trifecta of externships here. Um, Lakeland ENT, Spectrum Health, and Michigan ENT. She's going to get a broad range of experiences there as well. Hearing aids, cochlear implants, adults in pediatrics, more Baja moments, hopefully. Um, oh, Baja moment, like an aha moment. Okay, sorry. Vestibular and everything else. So again, congratulations, Kimberly. And finally, just want to say congrats to all of you. You guys have worked so hard um, and you should be really proud of what you've accomplished. Um, and we're really excited for your future and everything that that has in store for you. So congrats. And I'm gonna have Elizabeth come back up and she's gonna do the pinning. We're also gonna be pinning Sarah Pouliot today. Are you still Sarah Pouliot these days? Okay. <laughs> okay, just checking. Um, so I'll turn it over to Elizabeth. Right, so I'm actually going to call my VP up um, and do the pinning for me. That way I can stay over here and talk with the mic. Um, but really, we have these pins for you guys because we're just really thankful for you. And oh, no, you can't hear me. Is this better? Okay. So my VP, Aaron, is going to be doing the pinning for them um, while I talk, but I just we really appreciate you guys. You have been a really great support system. Um, anytime we have questions, we can always lean on you. I, I, I can't thank you enough. We all can't thank you enough, um, but we are so excited for you and can't wait to see what else you accomplish in your future. So, Erin, um, if you'd like to go ahead and start pinning. They're a cute little otoscope pin. And uh, for those at home that don't know, the otoscope is what we use to look inside of the ear. But uh, it's a great representation of what we love. Mm -hmm. 
At this time, I also want to thank my other board members who have helped me with planning this um, cat nep and Jamie Carroll. As well as all of the other um, faculty and um, preceptors. Also, I really, really, really want to thank it for being here for. <laughs> Um, helping us with being able to do the live stream um, for you guys at home. We really, really appreciate it. Um, but thank you. After this, we're going to go ahead and move down to the atrium for some food and celebration, and then we can go home. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Crumpton. <laughs> hmm? I'm sorry. We can do it later. I would go down and. <laughs> 